2019, we're at the Edelrid stand. Um, this is Phil, he's the head of product for Edelrid. Now, Phil, um, I work in the outdoors and we talk a lot about ropes and safety and there's been loads of chat in the last couple of years about edge testing. Yes. You're going to tell us a bit more about your developments around edge testing of ropes? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, what you see here is basically the machine that we've come up um, during the last five years actually yeah. um, to kind of evaluate how cut resistant ropes are. Um, the thing was that it, it uh, got kicked off in 2014 by an, an accident on the Swiss national mountaineering um, training yeah. where two people were lowered and the rope got cut and they fell. They, they survived but yeah. this um, was not of course the first accident where a rope was cut. Um, but it kicked off this whole discussion um, in the mountain in the mountain guide community. Should we use thicker ropes um, in terms of safety? Then, of course, not everyone was super excited about it because yep. they have to carry this up. And, and maybe two people on a rope is the other thing. Exactly. Yeah. These so um, basically, everyone, I think, came to realize that we don't know anything about it. Yep. Um, what, what causes a rope to be more cut resistant than others is uh, diameter really the solution and so on. Yeah. And um, we were lucky to be involved in this discussion and so we started to dig into this and to um, basically yeah, research the topic. Um, there have been quite a few attempts in the past. Um, I mean there was an edge test in, as a UIAA standard, yeah. the 108, um, that was introduced in 2003 actually, um, but it got already suspended a year later because the problem with edge testing or cut testing is the reliability of the testing methods yeah, okay. and that's basically a problem throughout other industries as well that want to evaluate this because the the edge gets dull over time and yeah. um, or you for example in terms of the UIA testing it was a dynamic setup so you were not able with a dynamic fall to reproduce every fall 100% equal. Of course. So the rope might hit the edge a little bit to the side or to the next fall would be on the other side, the yep. other fall would slide a little bit. So you didn't get reproducible results and that's basically the problem because you get a result and you don't know is that now um, because the rope is so good or because the test sucks. Great, know? great. So you've invented <laughs> this machine to stop the test from sucking. I mean, yeah, but yeah. it was not like, let's build this machine. It was like we had several machines before that. Yeah. Um, and we, we basically measured or like, we, like the, the goal was to get down with the standard deviation of the testing. Okay. Um, and we came from <clears throat> something about 20, to 30% standard deviation to where this machine now achieves like between 5 and 6% standard deviation of ah, the so testing. So quite significantly more consistent <coughs> test. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So the way how it works is you have a test specimen yep. that you put um, in the machine. Um, on both sides you have some rope clamps to fix the rope. Yep. Um, so I can you insert it here. Sorry. Can you push it? Yeah, yeah. perfect. It's quite exciting. <laughs> huh. I think maybe your rope inserter needs to be better, doesn't it? <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Great. So you insert the rope specimen and um, then you, the machine basically now pulls the rope tight yep. from both sides and you can actually adjust the weight here with this machine. So um, it's not yet a standard, so there is no, no fixed weight, so we can basically experiment. Um, right now we adjusted 50 kilos, okay. so, but this is now a yep. random value. So the machine pulls from both sides with the 50 kilos. Actually, this pulling from both sides is very, very important because you want to avoid any any movement in this direction. Yeah. Um, that's basically the whole principle behind this. Control as much variables as possible. Okay. Um, pulls it down from both sides and then this wheel spins 
and cuts the rope. And once the rope is cut, the, the machine stops. And then the distance is measured that it needed on the oh, wheel. How many times it's How many round. centimeters, basically, yeah, okay. it needed to cut the rope. Right. And this wheel is actually like the heart of the machine. It's basically what we, um, the, the, the thing that took most time took in development time. because yeah. what's special about this is the material and the structure. Okay. Um, because like I said before, <laughs> Cutting uh, tests have the, the the problem that they the edge gets dull over time. Yeah. Um, so it was really hard to find this um, this material, and then come up with a structure as well. So what's it made of? Diamonds? Um, the the <laughs> no the material um, is called cemented carbide. Okay. I, I learned as the translation of this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's super expensive. It's almost expensive as diamonds. <laughs> I, I mean, it's say. really beautiful and shiny, so... Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's this specialized material that we developed with a, with another company that's yeah. experts in materials. And so, yeah, this spins, it gets cleaned. This yeah. is also very important down okay. here. It gets cleaned. Yeah. Um, so it comes, you see here that you get like those residuals in the gaps. Yeah. Um, and it gets cleaned and that's also very important. Um, Otherwise it would make the notches less Exactly, pronounced. exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, basically the, the distance is measured. That's the result. So can we do it? Sure. Can we cut it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're set to 50 kilos. We're set to That's 50 kilos now. That's quite a small now. person, isn't it? Yeah, we can, we can set it also higher. Okay. I just Let's took do the, 75. I mean, it's, can we do 75? We can do 75. Oh, that's a normal sized man. Maybe the average UKC reader is 75 kilos. <laughs> sure. Is that harsh? I don't so know. 75 now. Okay, here we go. Now it gets tension. Yep. And... Oh my God. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> I mean, this looks very quick now, but you also have to see that this is like a lab test, you know? Yeah, like, okay. It's like the standard falls. It's also like something that you want to test. Yeah. It's. It's basically the reproducibility. That's the that's the yeah, okay. that's the most so important thing. So the distance thing. over any rope, it will always be yeah. comparable. So now we have 11.9 here. Okay. 11.9 centimeters. That's yeah. the value of this rope. Right. With 75 kilos. Okay. And you've created some ropes based on these tests. Of course, but yeah. like I said, it's two different stories. This machine is something that we are, as a manufacturer, are interested in yeah. too, because um, I think, or we we are convinced that. Actually, the cut resistance of ropes is the only measurement that gives a consumer really an idea of the safety characteristics of the ropes. Yeah. Because the difference between a rope that takes six folds and seven folds, yeah, it's, it's not relevant to the, to the end consumer. All the other measurements, it gives them, of course, like, I want to know what's the weight that's, that's yeah. valuable yeah. for me, but doesn't say anything about safety. Yeah. I want to say, I want to maybe know the, the sheath proportion um, um, gives me maybe an idea of the durability, but not safety relevant. Yeah, okay. This actually, it's not in the standard, not in any standard yet, but I think for the end consumer, it really gives you an idea of the safety of the rope. And yeah. when you go to the gym, you don't maybe need uh, a very cut resistant rope, but when you go to the Alpine, you want to you, have you do, a safe yeah. rope. And so if you're is your plan to share this? You want it to become a, exactly. an industry yeah. standard? We are, we are actually up to sharing this with anyone. Like yeah. um, We built the machine, we have all the, the data, the technical drawings. Um, we also are happy to provide the contact of the, the manufacturer that does the wheel. We yeah. don't benefit from it. Yeah. Um, we told them already that we are about to set up a standard and so we are happy to share this with all of our competitors, with with all of interest groups. We had already some presentations on the, the mountaineering, uh, or sorry, the, the national, International Mountain Guide Association. Yeah. We talked to Irata just last week yeah, that's um, right. for, for rope access. Yeah. Um, so anyone in the PPE community that is interested in pushing this with us is invited to, to get all the, the technical data. And, Great. And yeah. I think it's a really exciting step forward for mountaineering, certainly yeah. what I do. So, so do I, yeah. So, um, and yeah. Of course, yeah, we came also up with a new rope that is basically where we put some of the learnings of, of, of this process in so that we get a very cut resistant yeah. rope. Um, that's I the product side. Yeah, we're going to go and look at it later. This is, this is the, the testing side of what's behind it and the, 
the different story of, of, of um, yeah, yeah, changing the industry a little bit or in terms of ropes. Thanks so much, Phil, for talking to us. You're today. welcome.